Hello. Today I want to talk through my ideas as to what you should carry in your rucksack. Um, I think in America they're called backpacks. Now, I'm only going out for a few hours, so I don't need to worry about um, a tent or a stove or a sleeping bag because I'm not intending to camp out. All I need to carry is what I need for the next few hours and what I may need. Now, this particular rucksack is always packed. Apart from my flask and my sandwiches this, that I put in this morning, um, everything is still in it from last time. I tend to have a different rucksack for different activities and this is my day sack. So if you think I'm carrying something that I don't need, let me know in the comments. And if you think I've forgotten something that I should have, let me know in the comments as well. I'll take this rucksack off um, and we'll go through what's inside it. Oh, as you'll notice, by the way, if you can't pick up your rucksack easily with one hand, then it's too heavy. So you either need to get lighter stuff or take some things out because if it's too heavy, then, uh, well, <laughs> it's, it, it, stop, it detracts from the enjoyment of being in the wilderness. Anyway, let's uh, unpack this and you can have a look. So here's my rucksack. Just as a by the by, if you do that with your rucksack and it falls forward or it falls back, that means you've got too much heavy stuff at the top. The light stuff goes at the bottom and the reasonably heavy stuff goes in the middle. So it's supported by the center of your back. But that's a different video. So let's have a look what I've got in this rucksack. I'll sit on this rock here. Now, in the top, I know lots of people stuff loads of things in there. Mine is this bit here, this top section is totally empty. Um, I tend to use that for whatever I'm doing at the moment. If I'm navigating map and compass work, then I'll put it in the top so it's easy to come out. If I'm having a cup of coffee, I'll, once I've finished, I'll put my cup in, so, inside there. I just use this top bag, uh, top pocket, as a, uh, an extra. I don't tend to keep stuff in there. So inside, let's have a look. We've got, first thing first, just my personal gear. I've got a uh, mobile phone, <laughs> put it over here. I've got my wallet, and I've got my car keys. So I better not lose all this stuff. There's my car keys and my wallet. Now, the other thing that's in here is this. I've got, um, I've got a whistle for either calling for help or answering somebody else who is you know, requesting help. The international signal for somebody who wants help is six blasts on the whistle every minute. And you keep doing that until somebody comes or somebody answers. The internationally recognized answer to, to hearing six blasts is for you to blow it three times and then they'll know that you've heard you, or they'll know that you've heard them. Now, it's not in any books or anything like that. My suggestion is not to, if you hear somebody calling for help by blowing the whistle six times every minute, don't answer them. Just go to where they are. If you blow this three times, almost certainly they will stop blowing. They'll stop signaling, and you won't know where they are, especially if it's at night. So if you hear somebody blowing a whistle six times, it means they need help, but don't answer them. Just go and offer assistance where you can. Anyway, there you are. So that's what I carry in the top section. In the front section, let's have a look. I've got, uh, do I keep my map? If I can get the damn thing out. So here you go, here's my map. And of course, if you've got a map, you need a compass. Now, a map and a compass, if you don't know how to use them properly, I'd suggest, you know, is it worth taking one? Um, but that's up to you. <laughs> but they're not much use in, unless you know how to use them. And the last thing I have in the front pocket here, I've got a mat for sitting on. I mean, it's quite sunny today, but it's very cold. But on days when it's more, what's the word, damp? <laughs> Just being able to put this down and sit on it while you have a cup of coffee, it's honestly, this thing, it weighs nothing, but it's worth its weight in gold. So it's a sit mat. So then, that's the outside pockets. Um, oh, hang on, got some on my belt. Now, on the belt, I don't tell it carry much once again. Because of what I do for a living, I, uh, I carry one of these. Um, it's a GPS, the Garmin 66. Um, 
these are horrendously expensive so you don't need one I need one for my job but I'd suggest don't go out and buy one unless you need it if you live in the UK you can just get OS locate the app um, and it's free so it's up to you so let's have a look so that's that and there's nothing else in the other pocket so let's have a look inside the rucksack and it's not in any particular order so let's have a look inside so at the top <laughs> because it's me and uh, I do like <laughs> I like my snacks I've got my uh, sandwiches chocolate bars and other stuff in there to me that's very important <laughs> So I've got my uh, my food in there. Next thing I've got, I've got my water. Need your water. Um, hydration is really important. Now this sits in the, in my bag, and I've used it a few times. But this is a climbing sling. Now you don't want to have to get one this big. This is, I think these are the biggest climbing slings, regular ones that you can buy. Um, it's two meters long. Um, it comes in useful for lots of things. When you're out in the, in the hills, you occasionally have to tie off something, or even if you're going up a steep section, you might want to put this round um, somebody just to help them up, or you may have to go down and lean over. But anyway, so I always carry a long climbing thing just because it comes in handy. So I'll put that over there. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> My flask. <laughs> now, <laughs> I do know this is too big, but <laughs> it's too big, too heavy. Probably half of my rucksack weight is this flask. But I like my coffee. <laughs> oh dear. Lavoro in Italia. Quindi il caffè è molto importante. Forse devi fare alcuni video in italiano. Can you dice? No. But today we're only going to speak English. Ma oggi solo, <laughs> parliamo solo inglese. No more Italian. Anyway, so there's my flask. <laughs> Next thing I've got, I've got a set of waterproofs. Now, the thing about waterproofs is, make sure they're waterproof. It's, it's pretty pointless if you don't. Um, so I've got a set of waterproofs. I've got a big heavy jacket and an even heavier set of trousers. Now, the thing about waterproofs is, when you go into a shop and you look at the cheapest ones, they'll always say things like showerproof, rain resistant, weatherproof. They will do anything not to say the word waterproof. If it doesn't say waterproof on it, then it isn't. Simple as that. There are SIC codes in America, SIC codes, that stipulate the permeability or the porousness or whatever, how quickly water will get through a garment. Um, to be able to call it waterproof. In the UK and most of Europe there are EN codes. Um, so if it doesn't say waterproof, it isn't. <laughs> anyway, rant over. <laughs> or is that waffle? Right, what else have I got in here? I've got... Oh, now this thing here. This is a... Um, it's a group shelter. I'll show you how this works in a moment. You can get four people inside this very comfortably. You can get six people in it, we, I have done in the, in the past. You can get six people in this at, at a press. Now, if you're in an area like this and the weather is really horrendous, it's raining and wind and everything, and you want to stop for a cup of coffee, it's, it's just going to be depressing sitting in the rain. I imagine you're not carrying an umbrella. So having a group shelter is, you know, you can put them up anywhere. I'll show you how this works in a moment if you haven't seen one before. What else have I got in here? Let's have a look. I've got, oh here we go, I've got a bag, stuff sack containing hat and a pair of good quality gloves. Um, so that's that. What else have I got? Let's have a look. Full of stuff sacks at the bottom of this. Here we have a spare thermal layer, so I've got a jacket, another jacket, um, just in case, you know, the weather is, it gets even colder than it is today. So I've got a jacket. Next thing, I don't know, I've got a lot of stuff in the bottom of this. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. now this is my, this is my bits sack. So there's lots of bits in here that you may or may not think are necessary. So the first thing I've got is tissues for, uh, how can I put it? They come in useful. 
<laughs> now and again. Um, I've also got a bivy bag. Now, a bivy bag, sometimes, you know, this is a survival bag. Basically, it's a one-person bag, and you can slide into it. If the worst happens, then it's good to be able to get inside one of these and just stay there until the rescue team come and get you. So you do need to have one of these stuffed away. Now, because of where we live now, I've got a mobile phone charger. Now, this one obviously is too big and heavy for most people to carry. I wouldn't get something like this. But because of what I do, I tend to have to occasionally charge up the video camera and also the, the microphones and all the rest of it. So that's why I've got such a, a large charger. But it obviously works with a phone as well. Next thing I've got is, oh, Leatherman tool. If I can get the damn thing open, which I can't. There we go. So a leather mantle. Now, you, I can't see why you'd need a pair of pliers out in the hills. <laughs> but because it's a leather mantle, it's got knives and files and lots of stuff on it. Um, oh, it's even got a saw on it. So I suppose I could cut a tree down and make a house. But anyway, I carry a leather mantle just because there are lots of times I've used it and it's come in very handy. So I've got a leather man. Ah, I've got... Now people ask me, why do you carry two head torches? Simple. Um, what I want you to do to work out whether you need to carry one head torch or two head torches is this. Fully dressed, I want you to go and stand in the shower. Close your eyes and then try and change the battery in your head torch when it's total darkness. You only use a torch at night, most of the time. Um, if the battery suddenly dies, or if the bulb goes, I'd try changing a bulb with your eyes closed in a shower. <laughs> you know, if it's raining and nasty, it's a lot easier just to get out your spare to torch and turn it on. It really is. This thing about you must carry a spare battery, um, fair enough if you want to, but I would seriously suggest you have two head torches. Um, but once again, it's up to you. Next thing we have, what else have we got in here? Oh. First aid kit, very important. Last week we were on a walk in, um, I don't know, some mountains, and a family came past us with a little four-year-old girl, and she tripped over and she just grazed the knee. And her dad was so happy that I had some plasters. Um, <laughs> super, so he came to her rescue, super dad, because he brought her a plaster. But there you go, first aid kit you need. Let's have a look what else we've got. I think that's it. So that is what I carry. Um, in my rucksack. It's not a vast amount, but I can't think of anything else that I really need, and I can't think of anything here that I shouldn't carry. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll go over there and I'll show you how this uh, survival shelter or group, group shelter works, just in case you've not seen them before. Bear with me. So let's say that you're out walking and the weather is absolutely <laughs> normal, <laughs> normal for England. You want, you've been walking for hours and you want to sit and you want to stop and you want to have a cup of coffee or something. So all you do with this is, it stuffs really small because it's actually made out of parachute material. And all you do, unpack it like this, give it a shake, hold it out. Now you would normally put, if there's four of you, you'd put your rucksacks in the center and all you do is all of you grab it like this, raise your arms, and then just drop it behind you. So it's like that. And then sit down. So, <laughs> as you can see, it's quite roomy inside here. Now, you can actually sit inside these things for hours. You really can. Um, and believe me, when the weather is raining and horrendous outside, you'll be glad you brought it. Anyway, this is a group survival shelter. To fold it back up again, all you need to do is uh, stuff it into this sack. Don't let it go if the wind's like it is today, because as I said, it's made out of parachute material and it will disappear. So here we go. Start at the uh, opposite end to the bag, find the bag, and then just push it in. It doesn't need to be folded, it needs to be stuffed. So keep doing this until you've got the whole lot stuffed back into your bag. Just a quick point about your waterproofs. How do you actually get them back in the rucksack without 
I'll take you just ramming them in. I'll show you how you do it. What you do is get your jacket and do the zip up um, almost to the top. So you've got a couple of inches sort of not done up at you. And then lay it on its front. And then all you do is fold it so that the jacket is the same width or maybe slightly smaller than the hood. Okay, so there's your um, jacket folded. Now get your trousers, your over trousers rather, and put this, or put these, on top of your jacket. And once again, they want to be folded so they're actually not as wide as the hood. So the whole thing should look like that. And then all you're going to do is fold, keep it really tight. It doesn't want to go wider than your hood. So all you're going to do is fold it up, keep pushing it in, and then when you get up to the top, just keep going until you're going to roll over the hood. Okay, so it's like that, and then simply pull the hood over the jacket. And that is how you store a set of waterproofs inside your rucksack or backpack if you're in other parts of the world. So that's me, I'm uh, all packed away now, ready to go on my, uh, continue my walk. Just to think, this is a 35 litre rucksack, but as you can see on the back, it's expandable to 45 degrees. So you, you know, you can get a lot more stuff in it. Now, <laughs> there is a strange law of physics that you may be aware of. The bigger your rucksack, the more rubbish you carry up mountains. Just carry what you need. Just because you've got space doesn't mean to, you have to fill it. Mind you, the extra space does come in useful. Um, if you're taking a group of kids out walking, no matter how much you tell them, how much you check their gear, everything you can, once you start walking, they will have forgotten some stuff. <laughs> so you need to have lots of spares, and that's what I use that extra 10 litres for. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed that, you, and you now know, <laughs> you know what I carry in my rucksack. Um, it's totally up to you if you want to uh, do the same, but uh, I shall continue to do so. So I'm going to carry on with my walk now. Thanks for watching.